What's up, guys? Let's talk about dynamometers and the Field Tech USA dynamometer. Um, oh, oh, just a second. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot about all of this. Whew, it's kind of hot in here. So, what's up? Let's talk about dynamometers and the Field Tech USA hub dyne. Something really cool that we just started doing like maybe a year and a half ago or so, we acquired a mainline hub dyno. It's, and I must tell you, it's the badass dyno. It's the most amazing tool that I ever seen in my life related to power measurement on a high power vehicle. It's absolutely nuts. That thing can take whatever you can throw at it. So far, we have been using on OEM stock cars with like 200 horses and we went over 5,000 horsepower measure at the wheel, I'm sorry, at the hub. So let me explain to you guys like a little bit on, on how that thing works and what do we see on amazing tool like that one, okay? First thing, when, when you have a car and you bring us, you bring to our dyno. Different from other stuff, you're not going to strap the car to the ground as the whole vehicle. You actually gonna remove your wheels, take your wheels off, and you're gonna install a different hub. So it's like a small wheel, think about a small wheel. That small wheel, it's bolted to your vehicle. That thing is like the interface that connects to our hub dyno. So we can slide the hub in so it goes towards your car and we bolt the dyno to the car. It's bolted. There is no slippage. There is no nothing. There is no movement at the wheel. The car is actually free to do whatever it wants. Suspension still goes. If you have a radio car, it separates. Like going down the track. You have a pro mod, it squats. And if you have enough power, you can pull a wheelie on the dyno a wheelie standing still that can happen so in the end we still strap a car but just the nose and just if it's really high horsepower if you dyno like a street car that has a thousand horses 1500 horses that's not a big of a deal let me say it it won't pull a wheelie but if you have a 3000 4000 horse drag racing vehicle yeah you bet it's gonna try to pull a, a wheelie after you bolt the car to the dyno we set up the machine so we tell the machine how fast the car goes down the track. So we literally go to the machine and tell us, okay, the car is capable of doing this drive shaft plot. And let me be clear, it's not a specific plot with all those small spikes and movements and nosing up upstairs. It's more like a linear deal where you start on a number and you finish a number like a linear ramp. But the thing is, it's pretty close. It's really close to what a high horsepower car can do. If you guys see, we do one thing slightly different than a racetrack. We do not leave standing still. Louis, what do you mean by standing still? What I mean is, we actually remove the trans brake from the car. We take it off. So the car does not hold the motor. The transmission doesn't hold the motor. What holds the motor is the hub dyno. Why do we do that? you can measure the power on trans brake. So as soon as you let off the bottom, whoever is driving the car, as soon as he let off the bottom and the dyno starts to do the run, the dyno measure how much power was there. The wheel wasn't stopped. The wheel was trying to go and the hub dyno was holding. By holding, you can see, oh, I have 300 horses on the leaf. I have four, I have five, I have 700. Whatever number you have, we can measure. So the first power number is not zero. The first power number is the number that you would strike the tire if you have a tire going down the track. That's really cool. That's really important. So after he leaves, the car does exactly what it will be doing at the track. It's going to be shifting. It's If you have like a, a boost curve, it's going to do a boost curve. You have like nitrous, a progressive nitrous is going to progress your nitrous. You have a pro nitrous, yeah, it's going to stage bam, 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 all the nitrous kits. You have power measurement where you have like a time-based timing. 
it will do that too. It's gonna ramp the power down and come back the ramp in. Everything just like the racetrack. But man, it can be rainy, you still do a run. It can be snowing, you still do a run. It can be hot, it can be cold, it does not matter. So you take the whole tire, the whole track, the whole suspension out of the equation, and you're able to fine tune your motor transmission and make sure that it's making the power that you want, the power that it's capable of, and it's safe to do that. So if you have a big tire car and you have a nitrous motor, you can't leave on single kit. It's gonna shake the tires. But if you start on six kits, it may hurt the motor. On the hub dyno, you can leave naturally aspirated. Then you do a single kit run then two kits, then three kits, then four kits, then five kits, then six kits. You can do whatever you want. There's no tire shake. So you want to test your lockup? You want to see how much the lockup improves the car? You can do it. Do a run without it, turn it on. You want to turn it on earlier, later? You want to see where it spikes? Am I shifting too high? You can go up and down the RPM during the shifting and you can see. You're going to see the power going up, the power going down, doing something, showing something. And that's the crucial thing about this. It's not the number that it shows. Man, I, I, tell, I, tell, I tell a bunch of customers all the time, it's just a number. What it matters is, does that number go up or it goes down? You can actually see, were you able to improve the car and where? So you can see a curve, a plot of your power across your time or your run and you can see, oh, I have a dip. Oh, I have a spike. Can I take that spike off? Can I take that dip off? That's what it matters the most. And obviously, we all like numbers. So if he shows 3,000 horses, 4,000 horses, 5,000 horses, who doesn't want to know? Man, I have a 4,000 horsepower vehicle. That's, that's awesome. Why would you not want to know that? But that's not what it makes the car go fast. It's a combination. How fast can you put the power in? How heavy is the car? Does the car have downforce up on the nose with zoomies like a screw blower car? Or it barely has like a turbo car? That makes a world of difference. So you can't just take the power number and say, yeah, I have high horsepower, gonna win. No, 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 no. That's not what we do on the dyno. On the dyno, you're gonna be able to do the power that you can do and understand your vehicle. Your turbo may not be fast enough to spool. You want to bring the power sooner, but you can't. Or you have a screw blower and you have too much power early. How can I calm down the car? All that stuff you can do on this dyno, this hub dyno, this mainline hub dyno. And you cannot do that at the track, man. Think about when you have a gun and you go to the range and you do a bunch of shooting. You're preparing yourself to the day that you're gonna compete shooting or protect yourself using a gun. But like you still go to the gun range. It's the same thing here. Like when you go to the hub dyno, it's not mandatory, but it's really good. And you can shake down a car and take out all the gremlins. Oh, I have a leaking hose. Oh, a broken wire. Oh, a connector is wrong. One sensor is not working. You can do that at the dyno on a safe environment, control environment. And you don't need to wait to clean up or prep the track or stop raining. You just go. You can do 12, 15, 20 runs on a single day. That's unbelievable. And once you're done, you go to the track, boom, right down Broadway. So this helps you so much. This helps your whole crew. It's really important. If you guys have the time, if you guys have the schedule, I highly recommend bring the car to us. We're going to spend the whole day with you guys working around the whole fuel tech setup, making sure it's okay. And you guys going to be in charge of all decisions, but we're going to be bouncing ideas back and forth and we can share our experience with you guys. Oh, we seeing this better this way. We see better that way. And based on that, you guys can go to the track, have more fun at the track instead of just like fighting a problem or trying to figure out something that sometimes back on the dinosaur, 
a bunch of brands working together, makes things go quicker, makes things go smoothly. If you want to do something that's safe, you can have like a big fuel blowout. Nothing happens. We have our personal firefighter. It's safe. If, if you have like a oil leak, it's safe. It's fine. That's the great thing. You go to the track, you're good to go. So guys, take a look at some videos. We always try to expose the videos online. If a customer does not want to have the video or data or anything shown, we respect that. We have several cars that went there. Nobody knows. Okay. Nobody knows the number. We're never going to talk about it. It's just like a doctor patient relationship. But if you guys want to have like a good photo shoot, a good video shoot, we can also do those crazy cool videos. And if you don't have your car there, you guys can follow that thing. Do like the greatest and the baddest tuners out there that have been to our dyno previously and take a chance on bringing your car, bringing your crew, bringing your equipment and come over and try to learn a little bit on a test and true situation that you take the tire, you take the suspension, you take the track out of the equation. So when you go to the track, you have everything at the fullest. Okay. So see you guys next time. And just remember, it's just a number. It's just a number. Okay. See you guys later.